The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus told his disciples a parable. Can a blind person guide a blind person? Will not both fall into a pit? No disciple is superior to the teacher, but one fully trained, every disciple will be like his teacher. Why do you notice the splinter in your brother's eye, but do not perceive the wooden beam in your own? How can you say to your brother, Brother, let me remove that splinter in your eye, when you do not even notice the wooden beam in your own eye? You hypocrite! Remove the wooden beam from your eye first, then you will see clearly to remove the splinter in your brother's eye. A good tree does not bear rotten fruit, nor does a rotten tree bear good fruit. For every tree is known by its own fruit. For people do not pick figs from thorn bushes, nor do they gather grapes from brambles. A good person, out of the store of goodness in his heart, produces good. But an evil person, out of a store of evil, produces evil. For from the fullness of the heart, the mouth speaks. The Gospel of the Lord. The last line of the Gospel mirrors a computer phrase that we've learned a long time ago. Garbage in, garbage out. Have you ever heard that term? A long time ago, I was at a conference and there was a motivational speaker speaking. And he was talking and all this. And he was talking about, you know, what we process, how we take things in. And he went behind stage or behind the podium and got this big barrel. And it was a trash barrel. And he literally threw it out all the stuff in it out into the audience and of course everybody's shocked and what's this coming at me and he said did you like what I just did no what what's the deal You're throwing garbage at us and he says what would you do if somebody knocked on your door at home and you opened the door and they threw a pail of garbage into your house all over your living room well first we'd beat them up or something right run them off and then you'd clean up and then you'd be angry that they brought all this garbage in. But Jesus, through this parable, is talking about what's in our heart. Garbage in, garbage out. What are we putting into ourselves? You know, physically, what do we eat? You know, I've been trying to lose some weight. I've lost some weight over the last six months or so. Trying to reduce my carb intake. When I went to the Holy Land, I started eating carbs again. Allowed myself a couple of desserts. A couple is spelled 433. No. In just a couple of weeks, I put on four pounds. Garbage in. I pay the consequences, don't I? What about the news we read, or the TV shows we watch, or the music we listen to, or the books we read? What is going in to us? And then it's reflected when it comes out. In the first reading, it says, when a sieve is shaken, the husks appear, which the husks is waste, right? So does one's faults when one speaks, right? For a fool, right? It's in Proverbs someplace. Even a fool seems wise when he keeps his mouth shut. Somebody says, well, I wonder if that guy's stupid or not. And then he opens his mouth and he, he confirms it. He's stupid, right? What's in our heart, what's in our mind, what's in our very selves, what comes out is a reflection of that. And that's a reflection of who we are. We're preparing to move into this season called Lent. 
Ash Wednesday is just a few days away. And the church wisely every year has 40 days of Lent for us to reflect on what is going on in our lives that we need to purge. If there's some garbage coming in in some way, Lent is the time to make the change, to take that garbage and deflect it and send it someplace else, not let it come in. Now it's easy, if you're like me for many years, for Lent, give up soda, give up chocolate. And then on Easter Sunday, you eat more chocolate bunnies than is humanly possible and drink 400 gallons of pop, right? Did you really learn anything? Did it change your life? Maybe there's an area of your life that is garbage. And maybe it's not terrible stuff. Maybe it's just on the edge. Maybe that's what God is calling us to give up this Lent. And then if we do this right for 40 days, 40 nights, plus the weekends, guess what? Probably a new habit will form. And it will no longer, that thing or those things will no ha longer have the grip on us. And we don't want to just get rid of them, right? That's a good thing, that's a good start. What do we replace them by? So if, we, if let's say we give up TV, what do we do with that TV time that we give up? Do we just go to the internet? That's not really giving up, is it? Because that's interacting with some kind of media. Maybe we should get a book. Maybe we should read scripture. Hmm, pray, come to adoration. Amazing thought. Get the rosary out. I don't know. Take these next couple of three days and ponder that. And allow God in the still small voice to whisper in your ear and allow yourself to hear what he may be asking us to change what he may be asking us to do that will be a positive benefit not only for ourselves but those around us it said a rotten tree bears rotten fruit maybe we need to work on pruning our tree a little bit so our fruit is more glorious for God, more productive for the kingdom. That's what Lent is about. Maybe there's an area of sin in our life that we've been struggling with. Maybe this is the time to attack it full on, head on, and allow God's grace and mercy and our suffering a little bit to not give Satan place in our life to tempt us, to take us where we don't want to go. Maybe it's a time for us to increase how we interact with the world around us. Maybe we need to volunteer during Lent. Maybe we need to get out our checkbook and write a check. I don't know. Spend some time pondering. Make this the Lent, as Matthew Kelly says, the best Lent ever. Go to Matthew Kelly's site and sign up and get the emails every day. Go to uh, formed.org. They have one. Scott Hahn has one. There's all kinds of resources out there that we can take things that are garbage, let's put the garbage away, and let's take in something that is good for us, that will help us grow in our faith grow in our relationship with God. That is what Lent is for. So in that context, today is faith and works appeal for the diocese. You've seen, maybe you've gotten in the meal, or mail your card. There's some in the, in the seats and the pews for us. The diocese provides for us here at St. John's in so many ways. It trains our deacons. It does the retreats for myself, the priests. We just had clergy days, an incredible clergy day, a national speaker on same-sex attraction. All the priests and deacons of the diocese were there. It was an incredible learning for us. 
and how in compassion we can, we can serve these families and draw them in to the church. Our youth, we just had sing praise on Wednesday night in nine different parishes around the diocese. And I actually went to the prison in uh, Cushing and sang praise and had pizza with a hundred offenders. It was a beautiful night. There are so many things a diocese does for us. But they require us to give financially to help support them. Yes, please pray for the bishop and for those others. But they also need your financial help. So we'll have a second collection today. Take a moment or two. If you didn't bring your card, you can mail it in. Take one home with you. Fill it out now. Put it in the second collection. If you got a thousand dollar bill, put it in the second collection. But they need our support. They need our prayers. Because we're all in this together. If you got to think about it, take it home with you and ponder it this week, bring it back next week, that's fine. But it's a part of how we live out our Christian life is how we support those things that are important to us here at the parish level and at the diocese level. So we'll just take a moment to ponder that before we move on.